All right, so I'm jumping around a little bit. I haven't been out here in a few days. That's where I left off with that aluminum there. Uh, I notched out that little part for the tongue and it's just kind of sitting there right now. I got to weld it on. But uh, today some parts came in the mail or from Amazon. So I got myself the wiring harnesses or wiring harness stuff, but the hitch receiver plug, seven pin, uh, seven blade, and uh, some various items. So I will be doing the wiring for the tail lights. That's the plan for today. So since I can't fit this uh, plug through here, I have to take everything out of this box and try to snake it up here and uh, pass these bolts all the way through the tongue to get it to the back. This is they have everything colored in here for me, so putting them back is literally no thinking. All right, so I uh, got the wire harness through there, cut it back a little bit, left a little slack over there. Um, I have to mount the distribution block somewhere. I'm either going to mount it in the engine bay where all the air suspension stuff is. I'm just not sure where I'll put the battery at that point, if not in the trunk. Uh, right now, it's just sitting right there, flopping around. So that's not okay. All right, so another day in my messy garage here. Uh, right here is a part number. I don't know which side it's for, but it's for one of the taillight harnesses. And they're like... 80, 90 bucks a piece online. I don't want to ruin my taillight harnesses in this car or that car or that car just to make the trailer lights work. So what I'm doing is I went to the junkyard and I just want to say, first of all, it's sad that when you go to junkyards now, 90s cars aren't there anymore. My local junkyard has like 800 cars there, maybe more. And there was like three or four 90s Hondas and they had mostly been gone through, but I pulled these this out of a prelude and uh, it's got the same clips here. So I was able to get male and female, um, another male and female, and then I think I pulled these out of an old Accord, uh, these two males. So I should be able to make a plug and play harness. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do most of this off camera because wiring is gonna be boring for you guys to watch and I don't wanna put out bad content that's boring. So anyway, this is going to plug into one side of the taillights and I have another one for that side and I will wire these up uh, to the junction box here, right there. And uh, I ran the wiring through this already all the way to the front to a seven pin connector. And uh, so that's all gonna be color coded. So if I ever need to trace anything, I'll know what's what, everything will be labeled for, you know, tail lights, brake lights, reverse lights, blinkers, all that fun stuff. And then with the male and females here that I have this, I'm basically going to cut here and cut here and I will make them join together as a T with wires coming out so they will plug and play directly into here. All I have to do is unplug the tail lights from the trunk harness, plug this basically T or Y in, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I'm making and the other end of the Y or T will go down underneath to a seven pin connector there and it should be plug and play. Now, I will have to grab a constant 12 volts. Uh, I'm gonna grab it from my fuse box in there. That's what the plan is. It might change, but for now it's gonna be grabbed right from the fuse box in the engine bay and come down. And that will go through my seven pin here into that seven pin into here. And it will charge um, this little motorcycle battery I got. I'm gonna change over. I think eventually I'm gonna get a deep cell golf cart battery. I just want something small and lightweight for in here. Uh, but I need to get a battery isolator. I have to do a little more research on those to figure out how many amps I want. I'll mount it right around here somewhere and I'm gonna tuck all these wires nice and neat. Uh, again, this is just uh, for now, just to get this thing going. Eventually, I may have to reroute stuff because I do wanna cut out this entire firewall and put a full floor here, cut out that firewall. And uh, that's actually a two piece firewall because the fuel tank goes there. So I'll have to cut out both of those and I'll make like a false floor in here and carpet everything eventually, but that's, down the road, you know, next year or something. Um, I'm not in a big hurry to do that. For now, I just want to get it done so I can bring it cross country, put some luggage in here, some wheels, some tools, dog food, whatever else. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. So I'm gonna go off camera now and do as much wiring as I can. Hopefully I can finish it up in the next uh, couple days. So yeah, that's it. And then I'll jump, as soon as I finish that, I'll jump back onto uh, the front here where I will be welding up this along with some sort of cage that goes along in uh, 
an effort to make a door fit. That's a carbon fiber half door I fit for the driver's side right there. Uh, it has to be trimmed, it didn't come out perfect. I may not even use it um, because the fitment is a little bit off. I still may actually just buy doors to cut in half. Um, I did find some in North Carolina for pretty cheap, but they're NA2 doors. And the difference with the NA2 doors is they have holes down here because the side skirts on NA2s actually connect onto the door. Um, so if I do get those doors, they'll require body work. So even though they're cheap, I'll have to spend money doing that. So it might end up being the same. I'm still gonna try to find some NA1 doors. Uh, also shipping them here is expensive. But uh, I'll keep you guys posted on all that. So anyway, I'm gonna get back to the wiring and uh, stay tuned. Well, I got either the taillights or the brake lights working. I can't tell exactly what it is, but I found those two wires. I got the reverse light, the one on the driver's side, the light up for a second, now I can't anymore. So that's a mystery. Uh, the bulb's not blowing, I just checked it. But yeah, struggle. So, uh, big mess of wires out of a prelude, going into a big mess of wires. For NSX, some of the colors match, well some of them do. So still a lot of figuring out here, but I'll get it. Thank you, Eddie from Garage Specialties for making me this harness, which will go inside the car. And he made me another harness that goes inside the trailer. Makes my life so much easier. I hate doing wiring, so this is awesome. So thank you. All right, so uh, this is my solution so that I don't have to lift the tent off by hand and, and put it on by hand. It's awkward. It only weighs... 90 pounds roughly 95 pounds maybe a little more because i keep all my bedding in there let's call it 100 pounds so it's not that heavy it's not that i can't pick it up it's just awkward and uh, i have short t-rex arms so putting it on and off the car is not the best idea to do by hand and that's the reason why right there is uh well this will buff out but that's a scratch that's a gouge and that's because i dropped the tent on the quarter panel once it just slipped right out of my hands so i went to harbor freight and put this winch on the ceiling and uh, right now I have this 92 NSX um, backed a little too far on the on the uh, lift because my garage door will uh, come close to it anyway. It doesn't hit it. I could go a little farther forward, but just to be safe, I back it up a little more. I need to raise my garage door tracks. But anyway, back on topic here. This is my solution so that I don't have to do this by hand anymore. Um, right up there is the Harbor Freight winch. It was like 99 bucks, so I got it for, you know, 20% off coupon, 80 bucks. I think it has a 400 pound load capacity. And uh, I just ratchet strap it with these microfibers underneath. I ended up bolting these D-rings through right there and uh, I did them on all four corners. And I actually used the factory holes for the mounting brackets um, to put those D-rings on, which I just bought at Home Depot, and those are rated for like 1,500 pounds or something stupid. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so all I basically do is lower this down. Takes a while. But while we're waiting for that, I'll just say I understand that straps are strong when you're pulling on them lengthwise, but not so much when you're pulling on them up like this. But for now, it'll work. It's only 90 pounds stretched across these things. I'm sure these can handle it. Eventually, I will come up with a better idea. And I'm just lifting it up enough right now to uh, take it off so I can go pick up a Christmas tree. Me and Cash just got some Santa hats. And uh, we're going to go pick up a Christmas tree. And uh, so that's why the tent's coming off now. Oh, I just mounted this right on the car lift. Sorry, so I hit the stop record button there. I, my thumb hit the volume button but anyway you get the point you don't have to see it lift off the thing but it lifts off i could bring it up higher but i'll have to use two hands to do it i can't record at the same time because i'll have to pull this out of the way and then let it kind of swing back over the car uh, normally i would not have the car like this and once i raise my garage door track i'll never have to have the car like this so anyway that's it that's how i get my tent on and off my car without ever having to actually pick it up manually with my arms so cassius you ready to go for a ride in the car yeah, you are. So this thing came off a trike. I was at my friend's shop and he gave it to me. And I figure I'll utilize it. Um, so I'm gonna probably cut off these tabs and uh, have these suction cup things here. So I'll try to figure out how to fabricate a way to mount that to that. I can't just weld it on because these are aluminum, that's steel. But it's gonna go on top of the trailer right here on the trunk. 
and I'll use it to store firewood or uh, those traction boards or who knows, just extra supplies, luggage, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so the first thing that has to happen is I have to cut off these, these arms. I may uh, cut off the full bottom part here, these as well. I don't know, I'll have to uh, play with it, but I'll make it work. Let's see, I might just use, uh, I might really go ghetto rigged here and just do some hose clamps, just like that. Okay, so that works. Here they are. Kind of ghetto. I might put some through bolts. But these are holding well for now, and we'll see how it looks on the car. Extra storage. Ugly hose clamps. Maybe I'll bolt it on somehow with some through bolts. But it'll be useful. Yeah, it's on there good. Move the whole car. <laughs> Wiring messes. And here's Boost and Eddie finishing the wiring harness for me. Thank you, man. <laughs> and for this, so everything's plug and play. I didn't have to cut into the original harness, which is nice. And uh, you guys saw the video where I did the hitch, but I wired everything up to this uh, seven pin right down here and I welded that onto the uh, hitch receiver there just gotta neaten everything up fabric tape everything with looms I just taped up all that everything there zip tied everything nicely goes into this box which I have to tuck everything in there still comes out here I made these uh, grommets out of square tubing plugs comes over here. Now what sucks is I'm still gonna have to cut down this tongue because it's pretty massive. I'm thinking it's gonna be a couple feet shorter. Um, so I'll have to unplug all those wires, pull them back through, and then cut and tuck them back in. But yeah, that's what's going on. We just tested everything and uh, everything was working. But in order for me to get the third brake light to run, I just had to run another wire from my third brake light here or one of my normal brake lights, and uh, all the way through. And Eddie just did his uh, Rocket Bunny Miata. He did the entire wiring harness in that thing from scratch, basically built himself one. Uh, there's a lot accident. of trial and error. What's that? <laughs> By accident. By accident, yeah. It wasn't a deliberate thing. It just kind of mistakes were made, and new harnesses had to be built, a couple of them. But it's running now, and it's working. And so he has all these leftover pins and plugs and harnesses for me, so I'm grateful for that. It's nice to have good friends when you need help with stuff like this. Wiring, while I could figure it out, I just hate it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I hate doing wiring. So, thank you, buddy. Woohoo! Look how light the trailer is. 